everybody. Welcome to Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez. I'm your host, Emmy Hernandez. No matter your age, it's never too late or too early to start thinking about making your money work for you. But where to start? That's why I'm here. I'm excited to lay out some key steps to help you save, grow, and invest your money in the smartest way possible. Today's topic, I have yet another smart money strategy for you. Healthy body, healthy wallet. And I have special guest, Glenn Grant, with me to help you explore that. Most Americans carry a lot of stress, walk around with stress all the time. Do you know that there's a link between financial stress and your healthy body? Glenn Grant is, is an author and filmmaker and motivational speaker. He's with me today to help me explore this issue. Hi, Glenn. Hi. Great Welcome. to be here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Now, because you are a coach as well, and you talk to a lot of financial professional and other people around that talk about, you know, do, you're dealing with how they perform, their performance, their body, and do you know that they have a lot of stress? So that's why I invite you today to talk about these issues. Okay. Um, um, in America today, a lot of people carry a lot of debt, and that creates stress. What's your experience been with, you know, people that you deal with? Well, I think uh, the large stratum of the U.S. population is carrying excessive amounts of stress uh, and excessive amounts of debt as well. So the dichotomy there is that we are swimming in debt, in my opinion. Uh, vast majority of people do not have financial freedom. They don't have financial independence. And the debt is, in my view, as an author and a speaker, I've written about this quite a bit. Um, this is an area of the human condition that is of interest to me. There's a direct correlation between the debt load that people carry and the byproduct of that, which is anxiety. Mm -hmm. And the anxiety is leading to the heart attacks and the strokes and the obesity and all the other health problems that we have. So to me, there's a direct correlation to when you have a lot of debt in your life, you end up having a lot of stress and anxiety that leads to poor health. That leads to an early demise, an early death. And as an existentialist and something that I write and speak about, uh, that's keen on my list of things that, uh, afflict us as people. It's amazing because um, I, I read and they um, some studies shows that uh, most American household debt, you know, um, at least on average about fifteen or sixteen thousand dollar would be on credit card debt. Yes. Yeah. So that seemed to be quite a habit of American that living from paycheck to paycheck and credit card to credit cards. Over sixty percent of Americans could not come up with two thousand dollars if they were given thirty days to do so. And now that's a statistic that's in my new film, The Awakening, where I actually look at mm -hmm. chronic debt and how it affects people. Um, and fifty percent of Americans have a less than a thousand dollars in their savings account. Mm -hmm. So those are pretty tragic numbers. Debt is really a symptom of people's inability to delay gratification. So again, it comes down to we want these things to satiate our needs and our desires to be happy. So we want to go out there and collect the materialism, the nice mm -hmm. cars and the nice houses. Um, but all of that stuff costs a lot of money. And then when we get those things, thinking that we're going to satiate our basic needs for some level of joy or happiness in our lives, then we're faced with the anxiety and the stress on a monthly basis to pay for those things. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes a trap, a financial trap that people get into. And that's really what I try to illuminate in people as a speaker and an author is trying to get them to look at why they do what they do and can they find joy and inner peace and happiness without having to go out there and pile on a bunch of debt in their lives. Mm -hmm. So do you, with the people that you deal with or you interview for your book, mm -hmm. do you feel that you see the, the link between the stress level that they have with the financial problem, you know, that link into their health issues? Do you, you see anyone in particular that have that, you know, direct link for that? Well, I think um, it's, it's just a, a, a common byproduct. I don't know that you could say that it's a direct link. I think stress and anxiety that is produced from excessive debt mm -hmm. leads to certain types of behavior. So what is that behavior? We overeat. Uh, we don't exercise right, yeah. because we're stressed mm -hmm. out and we feel anxiety, which leaves us with little energy. Yeah. And so it really is in the circle of health. 
Um, it's just a lot of times people don't put the pieces of the puzzle together. Right, right. So that probably linked to you know when, once you have an an unhealthy habit because you need comfort food or whatever to calm right. you down, so then it lead to high blood pressures, over obesity, and even you know some heart problems and. Um, yeah, on and on and oh, on. Oh, well, I mean, my mother died at 51 of a stroke. And when my mother died, she had just a few thousand dollars in her bank account, enough to pay for the funeral. Mm -hmm. Now, that's absurd. I mean, nobody should be dying with a few thousand dollars in their bank account at the age of 51. And yet that is a large stratum of our population that is paycheck to paycheck and doesn't have 5, 10, 15, 20,000 of savings. And they have too much debt. And when you're in your 20s and 30s, you naturally want to acquire things, cars, mm -hmm homes, but the things in our lives don't define us, but mm -hmm. we have a, an identity that we create with having that nice car, how people perceive us, how we perceive ourselves, and that becomes an identity that we cling to, uh, almost in an existential death grip until it's finally uh, taken from us, like it was in the Great Recession, where five million people lost their homes, had mm -hmm. to file bankruptcy, went into foreclosure, and then when you no longer have all that debt in your life, and you're free of that, then you get a chance to say, well, who am I really? And do I need all these things? Therefore, do I need all this debt in my life to make me happy? Well, but is that, isn't that like kind of like an American dream that people say that, you know, you got to own a home and you got to have these, you got to have that. So are you saying that um, maybe people just get too carried away with that? Oh, of course they do. I mean, I met a 32-year-old <laughs> cable installer the other day. I'll give you just a, a brief example of that. And he's engaged at the age of 32 to be married. And now they're also in escrow to buy a $1 million home here in Orange County, oh, California. Wow. Uh -huh. No one needs a $1 million home. You can easily get by on a $300,000 home. But until you go through that cycle, and we're trying to prevent that here in, mm. in today's program, is preventing people from saying, do I really need to be buying a $50,000 car? Could I buy a $15,000 car? Do I need a million dollar home when I could buy a $300,000 home? And it's all uh, also, you know, our socioeconomic status. Where are we coming from? What is the lens that we look at our lives through? And oftentimes we look at it through the prism of materialism, mm -hmm. that we need these things to make ourselves feel successful and feel better. But at the end of the day, I think as you live a little bit longer and you, you go through these things, you realize you don't need materialism and therefore you don't need debt. Yeah. The debt actually brings anxiety okay. and that anxiety brings poor health. Right. But it all, of course, you know, in financial spectrum, there are also good debt and bad debt as yes, well. Yes, there is. I right? agree. Yeah. Um, like if you have to, suppose like you're building your life, maybe you have some um, strategy for good debt. You know, maybe something that build up your credit report, right. just build out maybe a home. And the bad debt that we try to stay away, such as credit card debt. Right. right. So um, when in, in the society, we talk a lot about, you know, building this credit score. I think that's mm -hmm. that's also another area that people are, I think sometimes it's over-exaggerating. That's why some people go out and say, well, I need to start building my credit and building up, having more and more and more cars just to have that, to achieve that status. Right, right. Um, it's unnecessary for that. And we, we're going to come back. When we come back, we'll talk about how to manage the level of dress a level of debt to begin with and then that will kind of like link to manage the level of stress in your life as well excellent eh financial can help you plan ahead to sustain your golden years our wealth management and financial planning services are growing in the San Gabriel Valley. And because everyone's situation is different, we'll come up with an investment, estate, or tax plan that works for you. Stop procrastinating. Call us today or visit our website, ehfinancial.com. Don't worry. We'll be there for you every step of the way. You are still here with me, Emmy Hernandez, on Smart Money. Now, Glenn... Last segment, we talk about, you know, this debt and um, that cause stress in people's life and come up with all the health issues. Correct. Uh, before we talk about how to eliminate that and how to, you know, help people get out of debt, um, during the break, you were telling me some of your personal story, which is very strong that you, you know, kind of like 
have an impact on your life. Um, I think you know the audience or the viewer probably have benefit of that too. Why don't you um, illuminate that a little bit? Uh, I, I mean, I think the whole genesis of me becoming a speaker and a writer and an author and now a filmmaker stems from when I was uh, 20 years old. I walked into my mother's room and found my mother dead. Um, and she had been dead for a couple of days. My mother, Nancy, was only uh, 51 years old, which is nothing short of absurd. Uh, she died of a stroke. And the thing that really um, brought that home to me in my journey that, that I've gone through over the last you know, 20 plus years is you know, she died with just a few thousand dollars in her bank account. Um, she was a divorced single mother and working her way through college to get her degree, and she rented a room. She used to be a homeowner when she was married, obviously, to my father. And so to be renting a room at the age of 51 and only have a few thousand dollars and struggling, and the stress and the anxiety that I know uh, showed up and manifested in her body, uh, what does that mean? Uh, put another way, it means, you know, if you're 30 pounds overweight and you're dealing with the stress and anxiety of your finances, it's very difficult sometimes for a lot of people to stay in shape and be healthy and so to uh and then and let's take that to its next logical conclusion is here in california and we see this on the east coast in new york and we see this in areas of florida and, and other parts of the country where the price of real estate is so in the stratosphere you know a five thousand dollar mortgage payment mm -hmm. in the west coast is a two thousand dollar mortgage payment somewhere else in the united states and so just the cost that people pay for their housing is as a as a also a real estate investor and a home builder, and I've mm -hmm. done a, quite a bit of that over the last fifteen years. Uh, I can tell you, I know the cost of drywall. I know the cost of foundations and wood and and all the things that go into building a home. And we shouldn't have five, six, seven thousand dollar mortgage payments and all the stress that comes mm -hmm. from that. So, yeah, for me, it's been a very painful journey to see somebody struggle financially, and then outside of that, see how many other people suffer from anxiety and mm -hmm. stress based on debt. Debt is very toxic. Yeah. And when you walk in and find your mother uh, dead and struggling financially, like millions of other Americans, I don't have the market cornered on, on tragedy, millions of Americans are struggling financially. And it creates so much pain in our lives. Right, right. Well, that's very powerful. Um, that's true. It hit home, you know, but especially here in California, because like housing, it's cost a lot of money, but people are in debt because, you know, some are for the good reason. Like, you know, you want to have a good credit score, right? Right. A good um, you, score, yep. Whether you're going to go build your own business or even get employment these days, they check your credit too. So it's, it's, it's horrible if you have bad credit, sometimes you can get, you cannot get employ well, um so yeah basically you know you have to maybe have a good debt like a mortgage debt mm -hmm. to kind of build up credit history but i i know that you have a an opinion on on the fisco score oh, as I have a well huge opinion on fico so. scores yes so so here is my opinion first of all we are not our fico score uh -huh. and so we get very attached in the journey of our lives when we're in our 20s and 30s to our self-esteem is derived on do i have a 700 fico score do i have a 550 fico score and if I somehow don't have a, a, a really good FICO score, a good credit score, I'm not a winner. Mm -hmm. That's our culture and our society. And there's something very, very tragic about that. We are not our FICO score. Yes, a FICO score helps us in securing a, an automobile payment. I don't believe that it should be uh, defining us to whether it helps us gain employment. That to me is wrong. And mm -hmm. yet employers are using our FICO scores against us to somehow pass a judgment on whether we're a good human being, whether we are capable and responsible. And, mm -hmm. and that's just not a compassionate way of looking at the struggle. Life in the United States is very complex, financially and otherwise. And we are absolutely not our FICO score. Look at all the people in, during the Great Recession of 2008. Mm -hmm. Millions, 5.3 million people lost their home, filed bankruptcy, uh, had to go into foreclosure. Are those people suddenly not worthy mm -hmm. of good employment or being able to rent an apartment? And is your FICO score somehow define you as whether you're a good person or a bad person? And the answer is no. Yeah. And so it's absurd. Yeah. But, I, I, but, but what I'm speaking to, I don't mean to interrupt you, but what I'm speaking to is how we as individuals define ourselves and uh -huh. our self-worth as, 
oh, I'm, I'm a winner, I'm successful, I've got a 700 FICO score. And that's, there's nothing further well, from the of truth. Of course, I agree with you on that, that, you know, we are not the FICO score. But, you know, with the standard in, in the society, if you fit in. So that's kind of like a, a one factor, okay? It's not everything. Right. What I'm trying to say is also working in the financial industry, I know that this becomes something important. So I try to help my client to build that. In a way, the like people who have make mistakes, Everyone can make mistake. You have bad FICO score. It's not because of you're a bad person. Right. But maybe some financial mistake that you have made. Sure. Somehow along the way, right? 2007, 2008, maybe you make a mistake on investment. You didn't really carefully look at your situation mm -hmm. before you jump into something. And as financial advisor, that's why I've been telling my client or prospective client that, you know, hey, before you do anything, sit down with the professional, take a look at all the situation for it to see whether you can afford it. Right. When you, before you buy something, ask yourself where you can re re afford it. It's right. not the FICO score, but you have to look at your own personal finances to see before you can jump into something. Well, I'll give you an example. I mean, obviously, we know that wisdom comes from the teachable moments in our lives, mm -hmm. and usually those are the tragedies and the setbacks and the failures. Right. So given that that's the foundation of where our knowledge comes from and, and through age and experience, but, you know, a great example of maintaining a FICO score or building one up to your benefit is a secured credit card. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go out and get a secured credit card for $300. It's a wonderful way to instantly build your FICO right. score, mm -hmm. move it up quite a bit. And yet, what I, I guess what I'm speaking to is, yes, it's important to have a FICO score so we can get through life and mitigate the things that we need to acquire, uh, whether it's an apartment or a car, affordable car, uh -huh. of course. Uh, but it doesn't have to define us through our self-esteem, and oftentimes our credit score does. But a, a secured credit card is a wonderful vehicle for people to start over with uh -huh. and build their FICO score. I'm a big proponent of the financial uh, industry and financial professionals, um, financial planners. I think you guys play a very important role in helping people go through life and protect their assets and grow their money as well. Uh, but I'm my, what I'm speaking to is making sure people do not define themselves based on their credit score. Right. And oftentimes people do. They just don't verbalize it. They right. do not tell other people that, yes, I feel a low self-esteem because of my FICO. Sure. And hold that thought because uh, you know, that's a good start. But when you have the secure credit card, whatever, you're going to build up. You know, once you have a, bit, a better FICO score, mm -hmm. you normally get offered by a higher limit credit, but you have to manage that credit. So hold that thought. When we come back, we're going to talk about how to help people who already make a mistake, get in debt, how to help them get out of debt, and, you know, living healthier. Tracy Leon. I think that any investment in Crown City News' program is a benefit to the community and to journalists starting out. And many more. Those folks and others are now working in their dream TV careers, and you can too. We train kids, teens, and adults professional storytelling on TV and on social media. Call 626-344-8314 to join the International Media Training Center today. Back here on Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez. Still with me, Glenn Grant. We still talking about debt stress here. So now the last segment here, we're going to talk about how to help people to be debt free and less worry about the financial. Okay. That's a good so one to I, I have a few steps that we can do here and you can chime in at any time. Okay. Right? right. So first of all, people need to understand that uh, getting out of debt or, or um, financial stress, it's, it's, it can be a long term process. Okay, so they they're not gonna happen overnight. They need it need to be they need to be disciplined in order to do that, right? right. And then because of that, a long term process, they have to manage their stress along the way, right? So first thing first, they may want to think about number one, reminding yourself that this is a process. It's not something overnight. I need to I have to do it, but I have to do it slowly. Right. And you want to look at your budget to see if there's any extra room in your budget that you can pay extra to those debt, credit debt, you know, pay down the principal on that one, or maybe even use some tax refund that you're going to have to pay down the debt instead of move on and spending on more stuff, 
Right. Well, I think a good a good start would be how to, how about accelerating your mortgage payments so that thirty year mortgage mm -hmm. becomes a fifteen year or a twenty right. year mortgage and saving copious levels of interest, hundreds of thousands of dollars in interest yeah. payments and we by can just do making that. a couple of extra payments a right, year. Right, right. And actually, there's a program that allow you to do, instead of paying monthly, you can do twice a month. Right. Right. So, and then auto, and that's a good idea to do it if you can see in your budget that you can do that. Right. So, pay yourself first. Yes. Right. Because yes. Um, um, looking at the, the interest on your mortgage is probably higher than what you make in your saving account right now. Correct. Correct. So you, you pay a little bit more of that. But I have to caution people too, though, don't go into the extreme because you still want to have some cash reserve. Oh, I you think still cash want reserves. to have emergency funds. Oh, I think that's the most critical thing. Right. And that's, in fact, the missing link. When, mm -hmm. I, when I threw out that statistic that 60% of Americans could not come up with $2,000 if they had 30 days to do so, mm -hmm. and that 50% of Americans, over 50% actually, have less than $1,000 in their savings account. That's real. Right, right. And when you lose a job, un you know, and unfortunate things happen in lives, then all of a sudden uh, the, the tragedy that people experience and the, the stress that comes from that and the anxiety is really overwhelming to most people. So building up your savings allows you to sleep at night allows you to reduce your anxiety and your stress, which therefore helps you with your health. Right. Like the rule of thumb, you know, for financial planning, before you do any investment, before I invest anything for my client, I always look at their financial situation and say, hey, you have the first bucket of the money is your emergency fund. Right. You're looking at your budget, how much you spend every month, right? And then time that by 6 to 12. Right. 6 to 12 months should be your reserve emergency funds. Once you build that, save that right and then then you can start paying down the debt pay yourself first and get get your debt level down well but i think what goes uh, with that is also reducing your existing debt by downgrading your life mm -hmm. and what i mean by that is letting go of that yeah. house yeah. letting go of uh, certain high-priced cars mm -hmm. Finding ways to live a more simpler life. Of course, yeah. See what you can afford. Yeah, yeah? absolutely. Yeah, so that that's also an important step. Don't over overspend. Look at your your own status, what level you are, and you know, ask yourself whether I can afford that or not. Um, then, how to manage that stress level? Also, I write, you know, in some um, journal medication um, medical journal also suggests that you write out a journal. You write out, you know, a diary, you know, it's just kind of like release the stress. No, it's very day. cathartic. You're a writer, right? Of course, so I know. So that, that helps. Okay. A, writing a book is a cathartic effort. Uh, uh, there is a, 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 the fancy word for that is a catharsis. But yeah, it's a very therapeutic way of getting out of all of that internal mind talk, uh -huh. the voice in our head about the self-talk that we go through with our debt and our financial situation. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a very good way to let go of that stress and anxiety and also step outside of yourself and mm -hmm. then take that look back and say, this is my life. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense? This way of life, this, I like to call it a way of being. So reflect. Yeah, very reflective. Okay. It's uh, you know, one of my favorite terms, having a conversation of consequence, but with yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, so that's one thing. So you can do a diary and write out. Maybe, you know, somebody might take that and make a movie out of it. Or maybe knows? publish <laughs> one of your essays in one of right? your local magazines. Yeah. I, had, I started having one of my essays published in my local town newspaper uh -huh. as a writer because I was writing about debt. Sure. So, yeah, that can help. Yeah, and find, and find uh, a social network that you can... Uh, Talk to people that you can relate it to, maybe do something together, like go out and play tennis, for example. One of the things in my movie, The Awakening, is uh, that I illuminate in the film that's very important for people to understand is this what they call this crisis of loneliness that we have in America. Mm -hmm. And that's actually affecting our health. Mm -hmm. And that so many Americans uh, really don't have that sense of community. So getting involved in community, whether it's a, a rotary group, some type of networking, sports activities. Uh, I belong to a tennis club, of course. All of those things are very important to our physical and yeah. our mental health in managing the stress from debt. Right, right. And you, yeah, actually you remind me about, you know, yes, volunteer is another thing right. that people can do because when you put yourself out there doing things for others, it's also making you feel better about yourself. It is. Okay, so that's also, you know, release the level of stress too because you feel you can see that there's maybe maybe many people that need your help that they may be in the worst situation than than yourself so you don't you're not gonna kind of like you know think too much about 
looking for i have to get these i have to get that to be better because other people can their life you know well you we live in a society where if, if i get this mm -hmm. it's i call it destination addiction it's one of the terms mm -hmm. in my book um, where if i just get this i'll be happy if i right. get this bigger car this nicer house this better mate or, or spouse or what have you these nice clothes a better job all these things are destination it's addiction, never end. and it never ends. It never That's ends. the you human condition. You get to condition. that, and then you continue to and the next want more. destination. That's the way we are ah, wired as humans. Isn't that right? It's interesting. And, but we can well, unwire that. We can change our of way course. of being. But you have to be aware. Self-awareness is yeah. where it starts. Sure. Um, and also, I think you also need to know yourself. Mm. I, this is, you know, maybe know your number about your health. Mm. Okay, go see doctor, right? Annual checkup. You need to know what level that blood pressure that you need to maintain. I take my blood pressure on a so daily you, basis right, at home. Right. See, so you know yourself. Little, yeah, of course, yeah. absolutely. Uh -huh. That's okay. what killed my mother. So right. I know what my blood pressure is. I'm constantly uh, checking all levels. I'm getting blood tests. And so many people don't, mm -hmm. actually. So know your number. Develop your healthy lifestyle, yep. right? What kind of food that you want to eat? Yeah, you maybe you allow yourself, you know, the pleasure of chocolate cake once in a while, but hopefully not every day. So, <laughs> well, I, I think, you know, the, pro the challenge that people have is that, again, I'm an existentialist. I write philosophically about the existential way of being, which is, what does that mean? That means life and death. Uh, life is very serious business. Mm. And if we're going to continue to eat poorly, we will die prematurely. Mm. And I know that sounds a little dramatic, but that's that's what I have experienced in my journey. I mean, when you walk in and you find your mother passed away at 51 and you're 20, that that comes screaming into your consciousness and your level of awareness. And so life is very serious business. Our bodies are our vessel. Most people, when they get stressed out with debt and finances that are not going correctly, their bodies become a, a trash bin and we just heap on all the sugar and all the bad eating. It's short-term comfort food that lasts a few minutes, but the price we pay is with our lives. And so yeah. there's a, you know, but there's nothing more beautiful than eating a banana or an apple or drinking yeah. clean water and letting go of all that toxic stuff yeah. and then giving us that lucidity in our minds to say, okay, now I've got clear thinking. How am I going to address my financial situation? There you go. And, and, you know, just walking around the block. We were talking off camera about just walking around the block, uh -huh. getting some form of exercise. It starts to perpetuate a really good cycle right. in your life. And these successful habits become that. They become habits in our lives. Yeah. So the bottom line is know your number, yes. right? From the financial standpoint, know your budget, what you can afford. If you have debt, pay down it bit by bit, and also stay networking. Keep family and friends support support group so you can stay healthy mind, healthy body, yep. and be strong financially. You haven't as given well. me anything to argue with you about, oh, so well, I agree with all of well, it. Well, thank you, Glenn, for being here today. And that's it for today's episode of Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez. As a financial advisor, I'm here to help you. So if you have any questions or comment, send it to me by email to emmy at ehfinancial.com. Don't forget, if you miss any part of the show, you can watch us again on ehfinancial.com or crowncitynetwork.com. Remember, being smart with your money is easy and you can do it. Thanks for watching. See you next time right here on Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez.